Hi, I'm Charmaine James, and I'm going to be talking to Dr. Lewis about some front-end lamenesses. You know, you know, they're probably starting in the foot, and just get his advice and what he looks for. Sure. Well, foot lameness in a barrel horse is, is common. You know, the, the foot takes a lot of punishment in these horses. You know, they run, they're running around tight turns. Uh, they're a very injury-prone area of the body. Other thing you have to remember, these horses are hauling a lot long distances, and that's not real conducive to foot health, spending a long, long extended period of times in trailers. It's way of life for them, you just have to live with it. I'll, I'll digress a little here and say I think it's important when you haul a horse long distances uh, all the time, you ought to pay attention to what they're standing on in a trailer. They ought to have a lot of cushion under those feet. And uh, get horses out, let them move around. That's important circulation in their feet. But we'll get back past that and start talking about the foot things you run into commonly in practice in barrel horses and it's either injuries or wear and tear and uh, injuries uh, happen commonly. Uh, I always try to pin that down and make sure even though I think it's a foot to, to be positive about that as positive you can and the best way to do that is with diagnostic nerve blocks and isolate it to that make sure it is a foot. Learn to feel the, get a veterinarian to show you where the digital arteries are, the posterior or palmar digital arteries in a horse's foot. They're on the back of a pasture and get used to feeling those things. Uh, sometimes you want to educate yourself because there's a normal degree of pulse you feel in a horse's foot. And a lot of horses that have a problem with the foot will have an elevated pulse. By that I mean a, not a faster pulse, but a much stronger pulse. And that tips you off that there's inflammation in the foot. Uh, but nerve blocks for a veterinarian, that's where I start, is block those things. Unless I put hoof testers on them and I've got an obvious, very, very sore spot, you know, that may have a, for instance, a foot abscess or something. But if it's just a lameness, I'll probably block that area. Usually, uh, we'll end up x-raying a foot if they're very sore. Uh, thing you have to remember about a foot on a horse is there's a lot of anatomy in a foot that uh, is hard to look at. You're only going to see the bone uh, with x-rays. There's a lot of soft tissue uh, components that can get injured. And they're not easy to see with an ultrasound because they're encased in that hoof wall. Uh, MRI today has opened up another avenue for examining a foot on a horse. And that's a useful thing when you get a case that you're not sure where you are. And it's, uh, you're trying to get an answer, and you got a horse, for instance, that's not responding to treatment or is staying lame for an extended period of time. MRI gives you another avenue to try to get it a more accurate diagnosis because uh, it does allow you to evaluate <clears throat> the bone better, uh, also uh, the soft tissue components of a foot. But uh, I'll go back. I look at them as injuries or wear and tear. And Injuries, uh, as I mentioned, you can, you can have ligament tears, you can have fractures, you can have cartilage injuries, a variety of things. As far as wear and tear goes, uh, barrel horses are pretty rough on their feet. You know, if they do that for a living for a long, long time, uh, the coffin joints take some punishment. Uh, the deep flexor tendon takes punishment. There are a variety of ligaments that hold things in place that the, the impar ligaments, uh, for example, and take a lot of beating. Uh, over time, those things get cumulative wear and tear and damage to them. Uh, navicular disease is something that's usually in a person's back of a veterinarian's mind anytime they look at a foot lameness, particularly if they're sore in both front feet. Uh, they're not born with that. They develop it over time, so it's always lurking back there as a possibility anytime you see a foot sore horse. Navicular bursitis, just from trauma to the heel. Uh, these are just uh, some of many things that can be wrong with the foot. You know, uh, imaging, the, variety, the various imaging modalities are important on the foot to help you sort those out. And you do that in progression. Uh, the longer you deal with this thing or it becomes refractory and you can't get an answer on them, you just go to the next steps and trying to get, a, get an answer. If uh you know, I think the navicular horses that are out there, um, I think there's a lot of people who think they have a horse that's navicular, maybe by looking at the x-rays. 
of it. But that horse really isn't necessarily lame. He doesn't really point trying to get off of that. Um, you know, and in that person's mind, he, you know, they think that horse is lame. Or you might have the person who um, that horse x-rays clean, but has the symptoms of getting off those heels by pointing one foot out in front of the other. And then they're, you know, darn sure a little bit lame to warm them up. I, uh, I guess a lot of people have the coffin joint injected, and to me that just doesn't always get to the root of the problem. And um, you got any? Well, you made a good point about the Victor. Uh, X-rays on the Victor cases or uh, sus suspecting the Victor cases. I think, uh, in my view, uh, there's some age changes that go on in the Victor bone that are pretty normal. I think diagnosing the Victor disease just based on radiographs is a pretty gray area. Uh, it's not, not exact science for sure. I'm pretty cautious about branding a horse as having navicular disease because my ver view of navicular disease, if the, and that's a degenerative disease of that bone. And once that starts, they're always going to have it. They're not going to get over it, and it's generally progressive. Uh, I have to see the signs and symptoms that go along with that uh, before I, I start to feel fairly certain that that's indeed what they have. And also, uh, over a period of time, that tends to, tends to make itself known that you've got a horse that's not responding to anything else and in fact it's starting to get a little worse. You should then become more suspicious that may be what you're dealing with. But on an initial exam, I'm a little reluctant to call them that. There's so many things that can mimic that that are transitory and that you can treat. And, uh, and those are not true navicular cases. You made a good point though. That horse that stands around and points and starts doing that, that's, that's Those are signs that he's signs. trying to take that weight off and is uncomfortable. If you don't see that, then that horse obviously isn't in, in that much pain or discomfort. But when they start pointing, that's to me, right. that's a sign that a horse is showing some discomfort. Yeah. I, I think the clinical signs that are like you mentioned, that fit in the vicular disease are probably more important than what you see on the x-rays. And then just getting them out and trotting them around on a hard surface, right. you know, with a good eye watching them to see if they're actually sound or not sound. Most of them will, while they still may move pretty well on a good yielding grass surface, but they hit that parking lot out there and they're like on eggshells. That's you know, I have a lot of people who um, will show up with the horse at a school that doesn't feel that lameness. You know, and the horse will have some obvious lameness. And I, I hate to always be the bearer of bad news. Look, I feel your horse is a little bit lame, but also I know I'm educating people and trying to make them aware because if their horse is hurt, he's not going to want to go out there and do a good job. And they, and it can get dangerous. If you've got your kid on a horse that's lame, you know, if that horse is in enough pain, he's going to do something to get out of it. Sure. And so, is there anything you can recommend? Tell them, you know, to get to their veterinarian, have a do a soundness exam on them periodically if you're a beginner and, and don't recognize that. Yeah, well, you know, if, 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 if you're a beginner and you got a horse that's not performing like you think it ought to perform, I think before I call a veterinarian, I give them an experienced trainer or, or somebody who rides a lot of horses, got a lot of experience with it. Uh, you know, like yourself, pe people that have been doing this all these years, you, you know, you've ridden enough horses, you pick up things that an amateur rider's not going to pick up. Certainly, if going to veterinarian's fine, uh, let them do a, a soundness exam, lameness exam on a horse is a good way to go. It, it, when in doubt, the horse is not performing like you think it should, get somebody with experience to look at it. Right. Yeah. Don't try to do it all on your own. You'll learn from people like that. If you're a beginner, get around people that have been doing this all their life, and it's uh, it rubs off. You you learn a lot about soundness and what to look for. In a, right, because once you get a good horse, then it's your job to keep them going, to keep correct. them sound, and figure out how to make it work. That's right. You okay. Need to know your horse, and when something's wrong, uh, get the help of somebody who can tell you what's wrong. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks.